Hi Floss Two. I am Sarah and welcome back to my channel, The Rocking Chair Stitcher. Um, this is my second Floss Two um, and I wasn't sure how often I would be doing these, but I found two weeks I had a lot piling up and so I thought, well, I'll just post whenever. Um, and so here we are two weeks later. Um, so I wanted to share some finishes. They're not fully finished. I have an idea of a full finish. Um, but it's not finished yet. So I would love your ideas down in the comments below if you have suggestions. Um, we are gearing up for Hurricane Lee, which is supposed to come in tonight and tomorrow into Sunday, I guess. I'm not sure exactly when it's hitting, but the rain's supposed to start tonight. We already had a big pre-storm yesterday um, that, like, where I came from in the south, we would call it a gully washer. <laughs> um, so it was a big storm, no thunder or lightning or anything like that, just lots and lots of heavy rain. We actually even had a leak in our kitchen. Um, thankfully it was really minor, didn't do any damage and I was able to clean it up really fast. Um, but yeah, so we are preparing for that. My husband's hopefully coming home from work a little bit early. We've got our, our screen tent down for the summer, put that away and the little kiddie pools packed up and everything. So just kind of getting everything tidied up so nothing blows in the wind and goes crazy. Um, hopefully it'll be really mild, but it is coming up the Bay of Fundy. And last I asked my husband about it, he's the weather guy in our family. He always checks that stuff. But the last, uh, he told me it was supposed to kind of turn inland to the left and go up kind of to St. John, New Brunswick, um, and Maine and that side of things. So hopefully it doesn't turn and come this way. I mean, hopefully it maybe doesn't affect anybody, but that's probably not realistic. So yeah, so we're preparing for that. We've got, um, our quote unquote storm chips. It's kind of a joke here in the Maritimes to get your chips before the big storm blows in. Um, and we got our generator fuel filled up last night. So if the power goes out, we're really blessed with having a generator. We can just turn the generator on and we can run the pump for our, um, oh, what's it called? Our well, so we can still have fresh water. We don't have hot water, but um, we have a little kettle that I can plug into the generator and get hot water if we need. So. We're set, we've got lunch and meat and sandwich bread and all that kind of stuff. So we should be good to go. Um, so hopefully it's not too bad a storm. Um, we are in the middle of a very impromptu, oh my goodness, the ducks just ran right at the house as I was, sorry, so distracted. Um, we are in the middle of a very impromptu little renovation. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or if you saw my first blast tube, you would see that uh, we are in the process to adopt um, our second child and we've not been matched yet, but because we don't know if it um, will be one children or two because we're open to a sibling set, for bedroom wise, we have three bedrooms upstairs and one is our son's and one is ours and the other is a guest room currently. So we have been talking about putting it in a fourth bedroom downstairs, um, but we had to do this big switch around and put our living room in a different space and um, we have this weird big space that's kind of an L shape and it's kind of useless right now. It's not used for anything. So we're turning that into a makeshift living room so we can put in a bedroom downstairs in the current living room. It sounds like craziness, but um, it, it will be beautiful in the end. <laughs> um, so right now there is like a, a fine layer of drywall dust on like a quarter of my house. So I'm just like barricading myself and my son during the day into the kitchen and thankfully it's a big space and there's blocks literally surrounding me right now and there's books and shoes and just about everything else. So um, it's a happy mess, it's a happy chaos, um, but really excited to do that little reno. We've got drywall to patch. We had to tear down some stuff in the roof from an old leak. So just kind of, so my husband should be home tomorrow because of all the bad weather. He usually works Saturdays right now, but he'll be home tomorrow. So we're hoping to like hammer away at some of that stuff. We'll see with little bear how much we actually get done. But anyway, I think that's kind of it for life updates. I have to get used to, I'm filming with my phone this time and I can see myself. <laughs> So I'll try not to stare at the screen the whole time. Um, so I wanted to start with um, finishes. So I didn't have any full finishes, but I did finish my It Is Well with my soul. Um, and I am just tickled pink with it. Um, so I'm very, very excited um, to see it done. And now I have to pause the camera and find out if this is backwards. 
Okay, so newbie here on the self-filming with my phone. So, but I just paused to make sure this wasn't backwards, um, but it's not. <laughs> I wasn't sure the way the phone was. Anyway, so this is my It Is Well With My Soul um, cross-stitch pattern that I designed a couple weeks, I guess a month and a half ago maybe now. It was like early August. Um, and I explained in the my first floss to kind of the significance behind this. So I am really excited. I'm still mulling this one over. I think I am gonna put it in that frame. Um, and maybe just trim up the edges just slightly, but I think I'm gonna probably finish it pretty um, shabby chic. Don't know if that's the right word um, or right phrase, but yeah, so I am very excited that that was a very fun stitch. Um, and then this is my other finish. So it's kind of like in two parts. So this is my friend Darlene um, from Darlene Dion Designs. She has floss tube as well um, and a ton of designs. She just did a, um, I think she called it a pattern parade or a design parade, I think pattern parade, um, where she showed all of her um, designs that she has in her Etsy shop. And they're such fun stitches. And like she said, they're really good, um, simple stitches and they're a lot of fun, but they're beautiful. Um, so this was her Happy Harvest. And I showed this to you guys last time. I had some more border to finish and then this little curly cue wasn't done. Um, and then there's a really light, um, stitching of little cream X's all the way around too. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like there's the green and then inside of it too. It just gives it more dimension. Um, so this one's finished. I finished it on, this is Painter's Canvas from the Dollar Store. Um, in Canada, we have the Dollarama. Some places have Dollar Tree, but we don't have one locally. Um, so you can get a pack of three. This is like edging into my haul, but I'll just show you. So you can get a pack of three of them. And they're just these little canvases. I'm sure if you're a painter, you've seen these before. So you get three of them for $1.50. And I could kind of been molding this idea in my head about using one of these as like backing and they come in different sizes. And so I just, <laughs> don't judge me. Um, this is my finishing in the back. I used my iron because I already had it out for another project. And so I just kind of ironed stuff down and then really tightly this strung back and forth. So it's not pretty at all, um, but there you go, first attempt. So I really like how it came out. It did, I should have ironed it more here. Maybe I can still press that, it's a little wrinkly, but I thought that gave it a nice smooth finish. So here is where I'm debating my full finish. I had this frame um, with a piece of artwork that, um, I don't know, you can tell me what you guys do. Sometimes I have art on my wall for a couple of years and then I'm like, ready to move on to something else. And I usually tuck the art away and then sometimes pull it back out and sometimes I'm just done with it and pass it on. Um, so I had this artwork that I put away or whatever. So I found um, this green ribbon and then this really pretty like lace ribbon. And my idea was to finish it in here and nothing is secure yet, so it looks kind of messy, but that lace will be right there. You can kind of see it going across the bottom just like it is across the top and I'll be straight and everything of course but um so my idea was I saw a cross stitcher on floss too I can't remember who it was um but she had a frame like this without the glass and she had put a magnet here and then she puts like washers on the back of each of her thing I think it's a washer magnet thing and then you can just change them in and out so that's my idea because I thought the green could really go like it definitely goes with this one was really nice I think it's almost the same color as that that green stitching around the edge so I thought I could put the fall in here summer could go with that too as long as there's a little bit of green grass or something and same with spring winter time I thought it might be a little harder but I could probably find a stitch that has some green in it I'm sure even for winter so I thought you know like four seasons I'm like a seasonal decorator not every month but like kind of four times a year when the house isn't in reno stage kind of switch it out and I don't have a ton of decor like I don't go all out um but yeah so i was thinking that could be a fun way to change it in and out the other idea i had i love the way my friend darlene finishes her she does it i i won't try to explain it because i don't know exactly how she does it but it's kind of on a board and then there's like another piece behind that as material so i thought about finishing it like her so i may copy you darlene um so that's where i'm not sure yet um yeah i'm still debating <laughs> for some reason finishing a project is really intimidating I think because in my head it's permanent. But then I was watching a floss tuber and she was going back and redoing old FFOs. And I was like, oh, duh. Like, 
it's my project. Like I can go back and change it if I want. So that gave me a little bit of confidence. I think I'll just play with it and then pick something. And if I really hate it, then I can go back and switch it. Um, so that's all I have for cross stitch finishes. Last time I told you that I hate sewing or that I don't like sewing. And, um, I like went out on a limb and I was like, I'm going to sew a project bag. And there is kind of a story behind this and you'll hear me mention more of this later. Um, but my Nana passed away this year and she was a craft supply aholic. <laughs> um, I, growing up, she would come to visit once or twice a year. And every time she came to visit, we inevitably ended up at some old antique schoolhouse, like that's like 110 years old. And you're walking around in this old schoolhouse and it's been turned into a fabric shop. And she had a nose for sniffing these fabric shops out. And my Nana had like, like an obsession with shopping for fabric. So she had so much fabric when she passed and a lot of other craft supplies. So um, that is on its way to me. Um, so I inherited a lot of her craft supplies. And so I know that a ton of fabric is coming my way in sewing notions. And I'm like, what am I gonna do with that? I don't even like sewing. And so I was like, maybe I'll just try a project back. <laughs> um, and I am, I talked about it kind of my last class too. Like I just jump in and go for it a lot of the time with projects. Um, but what I am learning is that if I can slow my brain down long enough and watch a tutorial, um, the audio and the visual at the same time really helped me way better than trying to read an instruction sheet. And I followed a, um, Elizabeth Ann can sew, I think is the name of her YouTube channel. Um, and she's got floss tube and Instagram and all that, but I followed her pattern, um, tutorial video for making a project bag. It's not perfect, but I am actually in love with it. I love the round corners. Um, I took my sewing lines all the way to the edges instead of stopping them with, a uh, enough, um, edge around to w permit cutting in the corners to get the sharp edges. Um, if you're a sewer, you know what I'm trying to say, I think, but I, I can't think of the terms, but I actually really like the curved edges to me. Something about it feels a little more feminine. Um, and I have a project bag that has straight corners and I actually really love it too. I like how much it stands up. So I'm not really sure. I'm a little back and forth. So it is um, lined inside. I'll show you with a complimenting green. And now I want to do, I love it. I love it so much. I felt like it was just enough like green out here to like pull together. Um, I want to do a whole project bag in this green now and then do some other color inside. Cause like, is that not just so pretty? Um, so these are just fat quarters from Walmart, <laughs> super fancy over here. And, um, it is lined with interfacing. So it's got a little bit of stiffness to it, but I thought it was so pretty. And inside I did just do a seam across. I didn't do the hidden stitching. Although I did not know that was, that that existed, the hidden stitching. If you're a sewer, I'm sure it's like probably one of the most basic things. So. I did it and I was like, oh, that's a real confidence boost. I can sew at least basics. And my machine decided to be really nice that day and did not act like a beast. So, cause usually me and my machine get in a brawl. Most times I try a project. So it's not my first thing I've ever sewn, but it is by far the most advanced. <laughs> it's lined guys. It has a zipper in it. So I love it. And I decided to put my be kind cross stitch into it. So super excited. I can see why some people have like, like dozens and dozens of these now for like one for every project and themed I'm like, Oh, I'm like now looking at fat quarters online. So, um, so that's my only sewing project. Don't expect many of those. Cause we'll see. They're going to be slow and few and far between, but maybe as I get going, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do more. Um, so next I have my whips. So I tried to touch a couple of different one of my whips. A couple didn't get worked on at all. And I've seen some floss tubers um, who are like, they're so organized. That's not me. <laughs> not yet anyway. Um, but there was a couple that I was like, I don't really want to work on anymore, but I want to finish like, so I can just be done with them. Um, so this one <laughs> is one of them. And you probably won't be able to see the changes at all because honestly, it's all just like back stitching up here in the sky and there's not much to see. 
Um, I think I put in that little bird since last time and then just a lot of back stitching up in here. Um, so that not a lot of progress, but I'm just trying to peck away at it and peck away like a bird, pick away <laughs> and finish it. Um, so there is that one. And this is just on 14 count Ada and it's a Jan Lynn design. Um, I think it's a kit from Walmart in the States. I've never seen kits by Jan Lynn in the, in Canada, but I was looking, there is a cross stitch store or needle store, I think in Truro, somewhere in Nova Scotia not close to me, um, but they did actually have on their listing of um, pattern designers that they carry. They do carry Jan Lin kits. So that's the first time I've seen them in the in Canada. Um, so this is a, another pattern I showed last time that I got from Hobby Lobby when I was in the States for my sister's wedding. It was be kind. And last time I just had the bee done. And this time I have a lot more done. So it's a mix of cross stitch and embroidery. I hate the blue flowers. <laughs> um, I usually love color, love bright colors, but to me the blue just doesn't go with everything else. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna rip the blue out and maybe replace it with just smaller versions of the big sunflowers, or maybe even like kind of a burgundy red or something and just smaller flowers. I'm not really sure. I don't love the shape either. To me it just, doesn't fit the rest of the style. So I haven't decided yet, but I put the blue in. And I was like, oh, I do not like this. So I am working my way up. I have, I think there's, yeah, two more of these sunflowers to go. Um, and I actually really love like the shading that they do inside of the sunflowers. There's still one more color to go in there, but there's three different colors. It's, it's a nice, um, really nice pattern outside. I just really don't like this. <laughs> But yeah, I'm really happy with the progress on this one. I think this is going to be a Christmas gift. I have like three friends who raise, um, raise, who have bees and they make honey. And um, I'm like, who do I give it to? One of them is going to receive this probably for Christmas. So we'll see. Um, so the next one I have is, there's a little story behind it. This is not um, my style of art. It's not what I would hang on my wall usually or whatever, but um, I've received one thing so far from my Nana's craft supplies and it was a bin of materials and there were two cross stitch kits in it. And I keep, did I put it in here? Sorry, I'm gonna reach here and see if, I think I tucked it away in another bin. Yeah, it's not in here, this is just my active bin. Um, so it came with two kits and so I'm going through this whole bin and I'm just like, cause it was a mix of stuff for my great grandmother and then my Nana and I never met my great grandmother, but she had passed her stuff on to my Nana before she passed away. And so I'm going through all this stuff and I'm like, this must be great grandma's. This must be great grandma's and going through and going through. I was like, nothing reminds me of Nana. And, um, <laughs> Then I pulled these two cross stitch kits out. And as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh my goodness, that's Nana. And so one of them is so much more funny. Um, I'll have to, I'll, I'll show it to you next, next uh, floss tube. But I decided the other one is too much, not my style. I can't imagine ever putting it on my wall, but man, it makes me giggle. Um, but this is like the sister to it. Um, so everything about this just makes me laugh. And it's a beautiful piece. Um, I don't tend to decorate with like Italian um, countryside kind of looking pieces, but it is a full coverage except for the white is just the white Ada cloth. Um, and it is by Design Works. It's called My Day Off. Um, and it, it makes me giggle because, okay, you know, she's sipping her wine by, by the, the ocean side, her cat's on her leg. She has an entire cake. And so I promptly asked my husband, I was like, why don't I eat cake in the bath? Why don't I eat an entire cake in the bath? Um, so she makes me laugh. This is like my Nana is the most eclectic, um, was the most eclectic art type of personality I've ever met. And I would also go to museums and stuff with my siblings with her when she would come for visits and stuff. So this piece is in honor of my Nana. Uh, it makes me smile. She was a funky lady and uh, this piece is so funny to me. 
I'm just like, I just need to relax a little more like that. Throw my bra over the side of the tub and eat an entire cake by the ocean. Like this is goals. <laughs> um, so this has become my, I'm tired and want to do long blocks of stitching like in the same color because it's big. Like it's almost a full coverage piece except for the clouds. Um, so this is how far I've gotten so far. And I am so excited. It's actually become probably my favorite piece to stitch minus one other one. Um, I was like, hey, honey, want to see a lady in the bathtub? <laughs> the wine bottle. And the little cat is just so cute. There's still um, some back stitching to do on the panties. And there's like some little like hearts or something on there. And this is the edge of the um, table. Like it's a tablecloth where there's gonna be like a Victrola sitting here with the big horn. Um, but I just thought the shading on her feet was so fun. So right now I'm working my way, I don't know how easy it is to tell with the light behind it. I'm working my way through the white stitches on the tub. So this is great at night um, when we're laying in bed watching a show and my eyes are tired, so I don't wanna count at all. And I can just go back and forth and back and forth. So I did the work of counting all the shadowing first. So then there's still another shadowing color to go. And then, you know, way more. <laughs> um, but eventually I think this will probably hang in our bathroom. Um, that seems fitting. So um, this is in honor of Nana. Um, so it feels, it feels right. It feels like a good spot in the grieving process to do something kind of in honor of her. And um, I'll show you the other, the other couple the other pattern is a couple nude in the bathtub, pretty much the same scene, but these two funny people sitting in the bathtub and I believe they're eating cake as well. Um, so I'm just like, apparently it's a thing. So cake in the bathtub. Anyway, um, so my last whip that I worked on since last time is Autumn Glows. <laughs> and this is like, was my birthday start. I started it a few days after and I realized what birthday projects are after I started. I thought it was just something you started on your birthday, but apparently it's something you work on all year till your next birthday. No way. I want to be like, I want to finish this so fast because I just love this pattern. So this is Autumn Glows by Little Dove Designs. And I found this pattern on Etsy and it's a four part pattern. I just bought the autumn one for now, but she has all four seasons. And I don't know if I'll do all four, um, but I, like I love anything autumn, anything fall, um, anything pumpkin. Yeah, absolutely love it. So this is actually um, some stitchy kindness, birthday gifts, whatever you want to call it. My friend Darlene gave me this fabric um, for my birthday and I do have the name of it. So let me pull that out before I forget what the name of it is. I kept the paper because I was like, there's no way I'll remember. So it's 27 count Linda Ivory and it's from the Stitch Bug. So um, thanks to Darlene for the really pretty fabric. It's a really nice long piece. So I will probably do another project on the rest of it at some point, but this is what I have so far. So I'm a little bit all over the place because uh, my order to one, two, three stitch hasn't come in yet. I check it like almost every day. It's like in Illinois and anyway, so it's still got a ways to go because it's coming all the way from Texas. So I basically, I had some of the um, called for floss already on hand. So I'm using the colors I currently have on hand to stitch what I can because I was just so excited to start it. And then all the fun oranges and stuff are on their way because I don't have very many orange colors. So they're on their way. Um, but look at these little boots. I just thought they were so cute, this little mushroom this is the um walls of the house and then this is a vine that's gonna have lots of pumpkins on it um and this tree has i think it's an owl sitting in it yeah there's a little cute little owl that's gonna sit right here i like every pattern i look at lately and like i'm just saving tons because I could buy way too many. But every pattern I look at lately has owls in it, it seems like. All the fabric I'm looking at has owls in it. I'm like, I've never been like obsessed with owls, but they're really cute. Um, and I actually have a project that I am gonna be cross-stitching with owls 
that um, the fabric and the floss is coming. So I'll save spilling about all that until later, but I'm so excited to cross stitch it. Um, but there's gonna be a cute little owl here. This is a little apple basket. So I didn't have the other color yet because it's in with my stitch order, but the other color is gonna go right here. And uh, oh, my cat laid on this. I got all set up for floss tube and had everything in organized, excuse me, organized piles. And I looked over while I was feeding my son breakfast and um, our cat seal was just up on here. He wants to lay on everything that I'm cross stitching. So, but yeah, I just, I'm so excited. This is part of the border at the top. And these are some of the leaves. There's a big tree right here. So I am super excited about autumn glows. There's still another chunk to go down below this too, so. But it's fun. This is my, when my eyes are not tired across stitch to work on um, because because I'm kind of jumping all over because I'm waiting on my other colors to come. There's a lot of counting in between. Um, so that is a um, fully alert and awake. I've definitely had to rip some stitches out already. So that is all my whips. Um, I was gonna mention, oh yeah, I have some birthday gifts that I was gonna talk about. So my sweet friend Darlene, she's spoiled me. So at, um, right after my birthday, she brought me a beautiful project bag. Um, she sells these in her Etsy shop. I'm not sure how often, but if you follow her on Instagram, if you don't, you should, if you don't follow her on floss tube, you should. Um, and she makes beautiful project bags. Um, and really pretty little pattern there. I'll show you the inside. The fabric is this cute little model dotted fabric. So I just thought it's so fall, like with the apple baskets and the crows. So this is what I'm keeping my autumn glows pattern and project in. And I just love it. It's super pretty. Thanks, Darlene. So, and then with that, she gave me the fabric I already showed you. And then she gave me um, this beautiful piece of 20 Count Lugana, and it's called Sudden Storm by Silk Weaver. And it is beautiful, and I have no clue what I'm gonna stitch on it. Um, to me, it screams like something moody. Um, I'm not into like creepy Halloween, but I kind of want to stitch something like kind of cutesy Halloween maybe on it. And I'm like, do I cut it up and do a bunch of smalls on it? Or do I do something like a really big project? I had thought about doing my owl project on this, um, but I went with a different fabric. So I am just gonna hang on to it for now until inspiration strikes. But I have contemplated greenhouse of oddities. I need to look and see if this is the right size fabric anyway. Um, I think it's such a fun stitch, but we shall see. I just think it's so beautiful though. So thank you, darling. So that is my birthday gifts. And then um, Darlene got a stash of cross stitch stuff from a friend of a friend, I think. And so this was in there and she said she just wanted to give it to me because it has an American flag and she's Canadian. I'm American uprooted and living in Canada. And so this was already stitched by the friend of a friend, I believe who maybe passed away. Um, so he is so cute and has the little um, old American flag on there. And so I think I'm gonna finish him. He may be my first pillow. <laughs> um, I have done none of the work on this guy, so I don't wanna take any credit for him, but I may finish him as a little pillow for Christmas or I might finish him as a Christmas ornament. When I was a little girl, we had Christmas ornaments that were cross stitch. I don't know who did them, um, but they were cross stitch little pillows that hung as ornaments on the tree. Um, so I might finish him into a nice tall pillow and hang him on the tree. I'm not sure. I think he's really cute though. And uh, yeah, so that is my birthday gifts. 
and then I wanted to talk about one little thing. I'm learning so much from so many of the floss tubers and I'm also learning there's such variety in how people organize stuff. And um, so I am finding with being new to the game and just, just making my first project bag, I'm keeping everything kind of organized in Ziploc bags in my little Dollarama hamper. Um, but I don't like the papers being loose because they tend to just kind of fall out and they get wrinkled up and stuff. So I just snuck into my office closet that I have and pulled out this little binder. And I showed you this pattern last time. I haven't started it yet, but I'm just putting, I've already taken the other ones out because I'm working on them, but I'm just putting patterns into these little clear sleeves and putting them in there with um, the whole pattern and the DMC list and all that. So that way I can just go in there and be like, oh, I need this one and take it out. I am keeping patterns as I work on them because I mark them up. I am keeping them in the project bags or in their Ziploc bag as I go. But until I start them, I'm just keeping them in this little binder. Um, I am getting an iPad shortly and I was planning on using Pattern Keeper because I've heard everybody talk about it. And then I was researching it and discovered you cannot use it for iOS. So I was researching, um, in one of my insomnia episodes and I was like, oh, what else could you use? And I saw that knit, knit, knit companion, knitter companion, knitting companion, mm, can't remember. Uh, I think it's knitting companion is like kind of an alternative and there's a free version that's like unlimited. It's not like a short trial or anything. And then there's two tiers of paid versions. So I went ahead and messed around with it last night and was putting in some of my PDF patterns that I've purchased into there and it looks like it's gonna be really good. You can't mark it up, but there are bars to move along to show your progress that can cross. Um, so I think it will be a really good resource. I'm gonna try it out um, once I get the iPad and see how it goes on there. And then I'll probably end up paying for the, I think it's like $10 a year to be able to mark it up, which like is way cheaper than a monthly subscription. And I'm not sure anything about Pattern Keeper if they charge you monthly or what. But um, so yeah, I think it's $10 a year to be able to mark up a pattern. So I am excited to try that out when the iPad comes and see how, um, how well it works. For now, I'm just gonna stick to my paper patterns because I have to be able to keep track of my progress or my brain just can't. <laughs> so my patterns are destroyed by the end of it all. But um, So I got a little bit of haul, not a ton, like my birthday stuff was so exciting. And I have a decent one, two, three stitch order coming. Um, and I do have a piece of haul that was like, I don't know if you separate stitchy kindness from haul or whatever, but I guess it just depends on what we wanna do. Okay, we're gonna do them together. Um, so some stitchy kindness, I did receive a pattern from a new stitch friend on Instagram, and we actually ended up exchanging patterns and just really enjoyed talking with her. But my printer is out of ink and I am not back in town before filming this. So I figured I would just save it for later and show you that pattern next time. It is beautiful and hopefully I'll have maybe started it by the time I do the next floss too. But so for this time, my haul consisted of a little raid on the dollar store to find finishing items for the happy harvest. And so I have a couple more of those boards, like the painter's canvas that I used and used one already. So I have those for future finishes. And then I found some pretty ribbon because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do and I figured I would use it. And these are just, you know, inexpensive dollar ribbon. This is not lined with wire on the edges. And this is a wire edged, what do you call it? Wired edge decorative ribbon. Yeah, that's the wording I'm looking for. There you go. They're all fancy. I thought it was so pretty. Um, so I thought I could use that for at least fall and spring finishes. Um, so I found that at the Dollar Room as well. And then I found this one, super pretty, which it's kind of ironic that I'm buying ribbon because I've bought and sold ribbon, like vintage ribbon and stuff. Um, and I do have some in my stash from my vintage store. So I may end up rating my vintage store supplies for finishes but I thought that one was super cute also from the dollar store um and then ooh, I'm so excited about this so I found two cross stitch patterns when I was um thrifting for my vintage shop and they were a dollar for both so they were both in the same bag one was just slightly started and the pattern does not interest me at all but this one was in the package as well so whatever 50 cents for this I thought he was so cute. 
a little fox and the deer. There's a little birdie. I didn't see the squirrel. There's a squirrel there and a cardinal. I just thought he was so fun. So I might start stitching him like in the new year or something. I don't have any plans to start him soon. He's on this pretty blue Ada. Uh, he's a Dimensions kit. Judging by the logo, I think that's an older Dimensions kit. Cause yeah, 1998. Cause Dimensions has changed their, um, their logo since. But I don't have another Dimensions one right in front of me to show you, but um, I thought he was super cute. So got him, have no idea when I'm gonna start him, but he's there. And then um, I got this pattern. Our friend is pregnant with their second child and they're due in, I think February. And they love mountains and mountain theme things, have a mountain theme um, for their kids. So just trying, trying to find, oh no. I didn't print off the cover photo of it. Darn it, okay. So I will show you this next time because it's super cute. I'm not gonna start it just yet. I um, had already placed my uh, one, two, three stitch order before I purchased this and before I plan to do this project. So this will be like my only like timed project, like it has to get done. But it is basically a birth announcement. So I'm gonna stitch everything except for the space where you put the name and the birth details. And then once um, baby is born, no difference, girl or boy, but once baby is born, then I'll get that info and fill it in. And um, I just live like three minutes down the road from her. So I'll pop it over to her. Um, so that is all my haul, except for I have the one other cross stitch pattern that I found at the thrift store. So I'm going to give it away and it is already started. So that may not appeal to everyone. And I totally get that. It's also a used thrifted pattern. It doesn't smell bad or anything. It's just been in a bag. Um, but it's not my style of pattern, but I don't want it to go to waste because there's the, the floss and the material for it. So it's this cute little kind of uh, Italian style pattern. It's got the the wine and the, the garlic and the fruit. Um, so I thought it was really cute. It's just not me. So it's already been started and they've put this tape around the edges. That's like the other one that I got that's finished that has the tape. So I've never seen this before. So I gotta, I gotta ask somebody what that is. If you know what this is, or if you do this to your projects, here's a total noob showing you have no clue. What is this? It's just masking tape, I think. I like how it kind of like just holds it together. It feels so neat. So it has the floss and the chart in there and the chart is not marked up as far as I can tell and the cute little picture. And so I am gonna give this away and I will ship it to you um, anywhere in the world. I have no idea if anybody's watching other than Canada and the US. I can look on the analytics for YouTube and see that people in Canada and the US are watching. So if you're watching from somewhere else, then you can enter to give it away too. So just don't use any of the buzzwords um, I'm sure you've watched giveaways on floss too before, um, but just in the comments, um, use the word fruit since there's bowls of fruit in the picture in the pattern and, uh, comment below the word fruit. And in the next floss tube, I will, um, pick a winner. So, um, I think that's, I think that's everything. I had a great birthday. I filmed the first floss tube the morning of my birthday on my 30th birthday and um that night we had a bunch of friends over and had a big bonfire and um the theme was everybody bring an autumn themed dessert and it was so fun because people brought different things and um there's some dietary restrictions and people like even thought of that and it was just a really fun time um and one of our friends worked so hard to make apple cider donuts and unfortunately made apple cider vinegar donuts. So it was a good laugh seeing a couple people bite into them because they brought them anyway, just kind of for fun, like to um, see people's reactions. And it was, it was some giggles and some people really actually enjoyed them. So, um, but it was a good time. It was, uh, it was, it was fun. We sat by the fire, a couple people brought instruments and just picked a little bit and, and sang and mostly just chatted and enjoyed. And we saw the star link 
star train thing go overhead, which never seen that before. That was cool. And yeah, it was a good way to celebrate and a good way to usher in the next year. So, um, yeah, I think that's everything. We're going to ride out the hurricane and I'll post a little video probably of rain. Um, I'm on Instagram and I'm pretty active and like to share over there. And I love talking with you guys. And that brings me, I'm looking at my notes here. I realized there's a couple of uh, floss tubes that I've really been enjoying. Um, and some of you guys I've been talking with on Instagram. If you see my floss tube by some chance, and uh, cause I know it's a little channel or whatever, but if you see it and you wanna message me on Instagram and talk, I love making friends on here. People are so fun and so nice. And it's just, it's, it's fun to like have a hobby that you really enjoy and find people who really enjoy it and are just kind. Um, so um, I've been chatting it up with Lorena and Lenda from the Fox's Cottage mom daughter duo and they're so funny. And I like fangirled, commented and then found them on Instagram and followed and then we've been chatting and they are just so fun. I get so tickled. They've got, I think two floss tubes out right now. Um, and then Lorena has got a whole store online. I think it's on I'm not going to try to remember where it's at. It's, a, it's not Etsy, but it's another website. Um, but she's got all kinds of beautiful stuff on there too. So go check out the Fox's Cottage because they're super, super fun and super nice. Um, and then I found Penguin Cross Stitch. I've been enjoying her stuff. And of course, you know, she's cross stitching penguins, but she's got other stuff too. And she was really fun to watch. And then the last one is X Stitch MD. And she does... Um, a variety of different stuff but she's working on a full coverage piece right now that is absolutely beautiful and i just really enjoy watching her um floss too because she's got big projects so i'm really inspired to not be too intimidated by the larger pieces um so yeah so those are kind of the three new ones that i'm enjoying um and yeah definitely go follow them definitely check out the fox's cottage they're a bunch of laughs and they have really beautiful pieces and um new patterns they're making and stuff so um i think that's it for this time i'm not sure when i'll be on next probably like at the end of the month or the beginning of october once that stitch order comes in with my um with my new material and floss um i'm really excited and i'm finding some also free resources with free patterns, some different little um, hacks that I'm reading different people's blogs and stuff like that. So finding some stuff. So I'm hoping to share those on my Instagram as I find them. So if you don't follow me already, you can follow me over there at the rocking chair stitcher and that's it. I'll see you next time.